Hello and welcome to this special program. I am Cyril Stova. And the Nigerian National Assembly has taken a historic step in the development of the country, the amendment of the Constitution of the Federal Republic. The first step in the process has taken place at the level of the National Assembly, that's the Senate and the House of Representatives. The other leg, of course, will be at the state level with the state houses of assembly. Now, expectedly, the process is the subject of national discourse. On this program, I'll be speaking with the presiding officer of the Senate of the Federal Republic, Dr. Abubakar Bukola Saraki, president of the 8th Senate and chairman of the National Assembly. Distinguished Senator, thanks for being with us on this forum. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. All right, this is seen as a major step and uh, perhaps the biggest achievement so far of the 8th National Assembly. But Nigeria is a complex society. Some 30 or so key areas which have been looked into. What do you and your colleagues envisage with this amendment? Well, thank you. I, I, I do write this. It's, it's, a, it's a big step. Uh, any constitutional amendment is a big, it's a big process. Um, it takes a lot of consultation, which we've done, and uh, we hope that with this amendment we will be building uh, a stronger country. Um, we'll be able to deepen our democracy. We would um, improve the process of electoral processes, have freer and more credible elections. We we'll expand participation in, in, in the process. Um, our budget processes, of course, will, will have improved. We will have a more vara united uh, um, country. Uh, we will position the country for, for um, in, the, in the economy side where you need uh, uh, a, a country that begins to mix the environment interesting for investment. Um, our judiciary also, we've tried to look at ways in which to speed up the process, which is also important in the area of investment. Um, by and large, these are um, demands that have been pending for a long time, that are long overdue, um, and um, it's taken so long to, to get that. And one of our promises at the beginning of the Senate National Assembly was that we are going to address the issue of constitutional review. And um, we feel that this is one of those promises that, again, we have kept. Uh, and we believe that uh, the country is much definite. should be done, but if you look at the budget process, one of the issues that have always been with us. That the, the president can submit the budget any time within the year. Um, this tries to say you must submit 90 days before end of the year, and the National Assembly must pass. So we hope that with this amendment, we'll put behind us, for example, something like that has been lingering for many years. Uh, um, secondly, also, as I said, if you look at the issue of pre-election tribunal issues, that have, sometimes you see members of parliament being in office for three years. After three years, the court the case is still in court, and, and those kind of issues, um, again, we want to tie. I think there's some of them are oversights that should have been addressed much earlier on. I don't think that means that the Constitution itself needs to be rewritten, but there, there will be holes here and there that we think we have addressed. That probably brings us to the, uh, the timing of this uh, amendment, and uh, it's about two years to the next general election, and um, it's seen as record timing because uh, there's so much more time to go with this if it scales through. But again, on the other hand, some would say there are other issues that might arise given to that. So why not? Well, you know, as I said, it was one of the promises made, and it's a record time. I mean, I was in the Senate in the last seven, 
and we didn't get to constitutional amendment on the very dying moments of the, of, of, the, of the Seventh Senate. And generally, it's a process that, because of all the consultations that need to take place, and, and the, it always takes a long time. And, and the fact that we've been able to do it in just over two years just shows the kind of synergy that we've been able to build, not only in the Senate, also build in the House of Representatives, and also with the state assemblies, because um, most of the consultations that were done by the Constitutional Review, especially the last session, also involved um, state assemblies. We've learned from the past to see that we bring a lot of people, a lot of the stakeholders on board early on and get their buy-in, um, so that by the time we send it to the states, uh, we should hope that we'll get a high percentage of um, success. With the benefit of the knowledge of what happened in past Senates that couldn't go beyond this process in record time, was it easy? How easy was it? It wasn't easy. I mean, I, I've commended the, the chairman of the two houses on the constitutional review and the members, and also the members of uh, the entire members of the parliament, because it's, it's, it's a lot of back and forth, you know, um, because you're talking about things that affect people's lives now and future generations. and. Uh, and even now, more so now, I, I, especially now that you must, we must admit that I said that um, I said earlier on this week that the, there's a large amount of mistrust out there. Um, people are uh, we are beginning to question even the unity of the country. And when you have that kind of um, um, environment, then issues like this even become more difficult. Um, also. Um, there is the place, as I said, there is polluted. If you, some of the commentaries you see, you know, the hate speeches, they, we raise on uh, tempo on issues that, you know, um, uh, are very sensitive. So to do a constitutional amendment review under this kind of environment and be able to even pass it through, I think it is an achievement. It's, it's not a small uh, um, fit to be able to achieve that because everybody is edgy, everybody's looking at the documents, if is there something one part, wants, one interest group wants to sneak in or, 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 or the other. And, um, and I think that to have been able to, if, as I said, if we had done this like nine months ago, I think there's some parts that did not pass that would have passed easily. But the atmosphere at the moment made it a bit more difficult. Yeah, so that brings us to the question of uh, the unity that you spoke about, even within the legislature itself. Uh, it's clear some of those uh, issues went through. There was some form of unanimity. It wasn't so for others. There yeah. was a, a division. You clearly brought up the, I mean, the question of a divided house. How did that go through? No, you call it a divided house. You mean you say that it, it, it raised the concerns of certain num number of senators, member of the House of Representatives, because if you look at the um, uh, some, of, for example, devolution, for example, it's a good example. My view is that that will have passed eight months ago. But the events recently in the country, uh, the, the, the different concerns either in the north and comments in the, regards to area where you use comments in the south, we had the issue of uh, the Biafra group and some of the concerns in, 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 in the uh, other parts of the country, uh, I think has created an atmosphere. And also, as I said, some of the commentaries when you read some of the editorials or sometimes even news, sometimes uh, that are not true, but all hype to raise this tension and concern. And I think that you know, made a lot of the members of parliament that did not support the evolution to think maybe there was more to it, maybe it was a backdoor way for um, restructuring, which is one of the words being used, bant around the place. And as such, uh, what could have been an easy sell, people felt, no, 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 let's, let me study this one carefully. Let me be sure I'm on the right page here with my constituency. Let me go back and consult more. Um, I, I don't want to rush into, 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 into this. Um, but by our processes, it must come for, it must come for to be um, voted on. And unfortunately, that, those areas did not pass through because of the skepticism by certain members of parliament representing different constituencies. Yeah, but Senate President, you would recall that the governing APC, which is your party, had made some promises when it campaigned, uh, when it was asking for the votes of Nigerians. And this, at staying with the devolution of parts, this was one of them. And this has suffered a defeat. It means the party couldn't galvanize and deliver on its 
earlier promise. Well, first of all, even if the party, even if all, even if all APC senators voted for it, it would not pass because it needs two thirds. So let's let's. So uh, in, in issues like this, it goes beyond it goes beyond party. Party, um, I'm sure, majority of the um, APC senators are had a position, but I think that even the party at the moment is set up a committee to look into it. So it's clear that we're not all very sure what we all mean by restructuring. Um, there might be a promise that let us look at it, but I think that um, we need to carry everybody along in a, in a matter as important as this. I don't think that we can stampede people that uh, either are not against it, but they're not sure about it. Uh, this country belongs to all of us, and I think in a matter as sensitive as this, we need to dialogue more. Uh, as I explained, even ordinary bills, forget constitutional review bills, ordinary bills, sometimes you, you need many attempts to go through. It can be defeated in, in day one, but maybe in a month later, two months later, three months later, it will go through. Even America that we copy, if you've been following their health bill, they've attempted this seven times in the last uh, few months, so, trying to see whether it will pass through. You know, you try, you don't. So the, the fact that the evolution has not gone through now um, does not mean that it will never go through. Yeah, it doesn't mean that the, and the, the, the party has failed. It means that we have not succeeded now. But uh, as I said, constitutional amendment sometimes does not take one attempt. So I believe that with the committee set up by the party, with the um, action taken by the northern governors and uh, traditional rulers, uh, with the effort also by the Senate and House of Rep that the members also should go back during this recess to consult with the cons con uh, constituencies, I'm hoping that, that by the time we all come back in September, maybe we'll be ready to have a second look at it. Okay, just so, as, as you said, the party has also set up a machinery. Now, that would the outcome of that be without prejudice to what's already going on in, in the National Assembly? Well, what, what, I don't know what the, the final report of that is, but I'm hoping that um, there will be great, there will be consultations between both members of the party in Parliament, the party itself, the governors, key stakeholders, so that we can have uh, what I fear as a common position. I, I keep on emphasizing that it is by dialogue. It is not by either we want to bully a certain or stampede people into taking certain positions. Um, that's why constitutional amendment is two thirds. You, you must have the buy-in of, of, of majority of the people. And to do that, it, it really is by dialogue. So my own advice, my own, uh, uh, that I'll keep on, uh, consulting that we should do is let us continue the dialogue and um, I'm hopeful uh, because some of the issues there are, are, are do not in any way uh, have any, uh, will harm any part of the country or bring about, but everybody must understand it. And, and if, if members of parliament even understand it, they must make their constituency understand it as well. So, and in understanding that we must get everybody to be on the same page. Uh, just, just a little longer on this issue of the devolution of powers. You've, you've been quoted as saying uh, it might be revisited. Are you confident that uh, the last has not been heard of it? Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's I'm, sh that I'm, I'm sure about. So what about the next stage of it? National Assembly has taken the step, the Senate and the House of Representatives. Now it is at the state level. How confident are you that... Um, I'm confident. It will sail through. I know that the, uh, the conference of speakers uh, has issued a statement commending the National Assembly and hoping to borrow a leaf from the process here. But you will recall, Senate President, that some of these issues had been discussed in the past and taken to the state assemblies, and they were wrongly defeated. Well, that's why we've, we've split into about 29 bills. Right? We started with 33. I mean, that's what was laid on the report. 29 have passed. So we have 29 is going, 29 or 29, I think, or 28 is going to the states. Um, I'm confident majority of that will pass. I can't put my hand on my chest and say the whole 29 will pass. There might be, you know, again, we have to understand that even in the houses, they, rep they have their constituencies. You know. they, were, they attended our last review session. So they've, they have been carried along in the whole process. When we started this process from day one, when they all came to my office at the beginning of this tenant, we, we, we got them involved. We told them this is what we're going to do. We're not just going to do the review and national assembly and just, just send it to you. You're going to be part of what we're doing. Now, that still doesn't mean we'll get 100%. 
when we get to the states, there will be some other issues. But, but I think I'm confident that, by and large, majority will sail through. I think I'm hoping that we'll get a 90% success rate in the states. And if we do that, I think you know, we, have, we, have, we, have, we have achieved a lot. All right, but have we, uh, through speaking about achievements, are you satisfied with what uh, the eight uh, Senate has been able to do under your leadership? Well, I think the best way to achieve that is really by looking at our records and looking at what we've been able to do. Our prime, prime, res prime responsibility of the National Assembly is to, is to legislate and pass laws. And if you, if, you, if you look at what we've been able to do in two years, uh, just six, 26 months in the Senate, we've been able to pass over 125 bills. Uh, if you look at the, the fifth, sixth, and seventh Senate, the seventh Senate, I was part of that, in four years, we passed 129 bills. The um, sixth Senate only passed about 72 bills. And the fifth Senate, about 129, all in four years. So, so basically, one of the major cardinal of how to measure, our parameters of how to measure we've done, we've surpassed every single uh, uh, um, Senate before our time. Uh, we've also been able to address a lot of interventions and petitions. Now, that is important for me because it means that we're, we're responding to people, the people who represent their concerns. Uh, and that is one of, apart from passing law, that's key. I mean, for example, if we look at intervention, just recently there was a problem in, in Loud Tech, for example, that been shot for a number of years, and, and we took up the matter, and now the states are doing something about it, the Ministry of Education. So the confidence we are giving the Nigerian people that there's somewhere you can go to be able to address things that concern you. And the more we can strengthen that, um, the better it is for our democracy. If you look at uh, even recently the issue um, of, of the studies, the religious and Islamic studies, where we had a delegation from Cannes, um, not long, within a few days of them visiting us, Immediately, the Minister of Education re-emphasized it. I mean, they had already taken a position on it, but came out clearly, government came out clearly and took a position to address that issue, that we must revert back to the schools, just, um, teaching different. Queen's College, one of the unity schools also, had issues. It was after they came to visit us again, we intervened, and immediately, of course, money was provided in the budget. The executive also took it up. So um, that kind of response, we begin to see. And so from that point of view, I would say that if you, if you base it on, 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 on the kind of uh, uh, things that we're doing, for example, openness of NAS for many years has not been done. There are bills that, like the petroleum bill that has been, not been able to pass for over. So, there, so when you say our achievements, I think our achievements, as I said, would, should be judged by, by, our, by, our, by our records. All right, we'll still come to the uh, petroleum bill in just a moment. But um, uh, this uh, activity is reflective of uh, even the amendment of the Constitution which the Senate has embarked on. But yes, we said earlier that um, at some point there was some form of un unanimity, but at another point it clearly showed the divisions. But let's go back a little bit. Your emergence as President of the Senate was uh, turbulent, to say the List and uh, at one point in time, quite a number of Nigerians felt that this Senate wasn't going anywhere with those issues. But it would seem that some form of unity has been forged. How did that come about? Well, I, I, I believe that um, from from for a lot of uh, from day one, I think that um, uh, majority of uh, uh, of, of, my, of our colleagues had given me a lot of support. Um, we had a few that were not on board, but um, we've been able to have an approach that um, it's, we will try to ensure that we bring everybody on board. Uh, it's, it's like any, any um, election. There's, when you come out of an election, you know, there are those that you know, support you, but once you win, you must be a leader for all, and that is what we w have worked out over the worked hard on since I emerged to make sure that we carry everybody along. Uh, we'll have achieved it much earlier. Unfortunately, there were a lot of um, outside forces that were uh, interfering in, 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 in some of our processes. And that's what delayed the process. Uh, that is why a lot of the events that were happening outside the chamber were not reflected in the chambers. In chambers, you find that there was unity, there was cohesion, we're all working one direction. 
and then, then finally the few left, we were able to bend here, make concessions here, bring everybody together, and that's what we've been able to, to, uh, to achieve. And then the maturity, the patriotism, and the fact that uh, we, we all believe that we're, we're here to serve the, the country first. The issue that really arose for my election was back to the, to the, the, to the backbone of the fact that there must be um, independence of the three arms of, of, of government. You know that elections of the of the um, of, of, of the national assembly uh, are, are, should should be largely left in the arms of those in the hands of those who are who are there. Um, yes, they, 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 they should be guided by, by the party, and over the years they have been guided by parties saying either we, we, we zoom to here or we zoom to there. Um, but it has always been resisted. Uh, outside, people should say it must be Mr. A or it must be Mr. Y. And I think that is what was resistant. And I think it has laid the foundation that something that going forward as well will strengthen our democracy when we continue to strengthen the independence. And I think for, by and large, that was where majority of the senators stood, and then finally, um, as you say, as we worked along, a lot of the senators then came on board. So, how much of this came to play during this process of amending the constitution? Well, the constitution amendment had nothing to do with the um, issue of emergence of. Because amending your constitution is largely the issues you saw there were really issues back at home. It's all, as I say, all politics is local. If you look at the pattern of how senators voted, you see there was a trend based on the constituencies, constituencies they represented, not on um, the politics of the Senate at all. I mean, if you look also, I mean, this House, if you look, there's a clear similarity. If you go and look at the pattern of how members in the House voted, you see that members in a particular state, either Senate or House of Rep, pretty much voted in the same, in the same line. So that shows you that it's not, it was not any internal politics of National Assembly that dictated how the voting pattern of constitutional amendment went. Senate President, let's look at um, one of those bills that is of uh, peculiar interest to just about uh, <laughs> the, the entire nation since uh, it talks about the main source of its, re its revenues, the petroleum industry governance bill. This has been passed by the Senate. There are so many other related bills which are still pending. Um, like a uh, host community bill, uh, the industry administration bill, and all that. When are we looking at these bills to go through the state? Well, as you know, host uh, community bill, um, one of the major concerns, of course, of uh, uh, the host community is what is the new petroleum bill going to do to improve the, the conditions of the host communities and their participation? Uh, we've taken that as a bill, fiscal, the fiscal bill also, what are the, uh, the taxations, the terms of engagement, of investment, and, and those kind of issues also are there. Uh, we've passed that to second reading now, so it's going to community level. And I'm hoping that all the stakeholders, this is the most important bills really. I mean, governance is important. But this, this one is this, because this is what decides whether it is commercially viable for, for um, the oil companies to invest. This also shows how competitive we are as a country because there are many places where you can go and drill oil today and, and we've got to be competitive. And also this also affects the revenue that also comes to, to, the, to the Federation. So it's an important bill that will decide. Um, the level of investment you're going to see in the oil and gas sector. So I'm hoping that over the, over the next, uh, by the time we come back on recess, maybe we will have been able to uh, make some headway. But um, it's not something I'll be able to commit time now because it's, it's a very, very, it's a lot of work, technical work that needs to go into it. Yeah, but, but, but then is the definition of a post community one of the major challenges of this? Because I uh, listen to uh, analyses and discussions, it would seem that even defining who, what or who is a host community itself is, uh, is a major problem. Who, who, is that a problem? No, I, don't think we, 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 I think we'll, we'll, get, we'll get, a, get across that one. I don't think, I don't think it's a huge... I mean, it is a problem, I don't think. Uh, but I think we've, uh, we've shown in this uh, study that uh, the capacity to take on problems and find solutions to them is one of the things we've been able to do. So maybe I'm just very optimistic about some of these issue challenges that have always been before us in the years that um, um, where I believe that with, with the kind of unity that we have in, in the Senate, the fact that we're all moving, that even some of the difficult ones, um, we, we tend to find ways of finding solutions to them. So I'm confident this one as well 
we'll find a solution to it. Would that so also be the same uh, uh, thing for some of the bills that are still pending in the in the House, uh, those that the Senate has well, passed? We're, meet, we're meeting with the House, uh, we're meeting with the Senate, we're, we're trying to see, they to have bills with us too that are pending. So we'll, we'll, we'll put up a, a committee led by the leaders of the two houses to see how we can hasten some of these bills that are pending with us and also pending with them so that we can quickly uh, have concurrence or conferences necessary to pass them. We're working on that and, and we're hopeful that you know, we'll try and clear that backlog of bills both in the two chambers that are outstanding. The citizens would say, what can the current Senate speak about? Is it when there are issues that, uh, of course, you've uh, spoken of how important it is that the legislature maintains uh, it, its independence. Is it when there are such issues that suddenly the Senate becomes strengthened and for some other issues, then there are questions to be raised about how strong the Senate is. In other words, what are those weaknesses First, before we look at the strength, because easily you'd reel out so many things that have been the strength. The weaknesses of this current city. Um, I think the weakness must have been the fact that um, we had a lot of um, distraction at the beginning and we lost time. I think if we didn't have that, we'll have done the constitutional amendment the first year. We'll probably have passed more bills than we have now. Um, I think. Um, Well, I'm not sure. I can still think of any 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 other any other uh, weakness from that. I think that, I think what I'll say is that there are, there are challenges because you know we're we're operating at a time that again even previous people before us have not. You know now you've got um, the social media, you've got news is instant. Um, so you know those are those are challenging times where you need to be uh, be able to respond to issues that are going on and, and there being communicators like that. Uh, then you have the period also where news are what you call fake news and uh, sometimes things that are not true, misreporting sometimes of issues that are very sensitive. So they're challenging, they're challenging times, but that's not weakness. I mean, those are, those are the points you have to live up to and, and, and adjust and, and adapt. And um, I, think we, I think that we, we, we are doing that uh, despite the kind of uh, um, distraction. I don't forget when we started off the EPC as a ruling party, we only had a, we only had a, a, a majority of just about um, 10, or 10, 10 to 12 um, um, in number. And, and being able to um, work under that environment, so that was a weakness on its own because we didn't have you know, an overwhelming majority. I mean, since then, you know, things have got a bit better now. Um, so that also has been, I guess, a, a weakness. Okay, challenges you call them, not weaknesses. So if you look on the other side of it and say yes, which would you say these, these are the areas that the Senate has been very strong, has come on strong to fulfill its, uh, its mandate to the, the people? I think, I think what we've been able to do is, is address those, those laws that have long affected uh, Nigerians that we needed to pass to improve the, the, the country, the economy, the environment. For example, a lot of infrastructure bills that have been long outstanding, that have not been able to pass, we've been able to do that. The laws to do with improving uh, elections, uh, INEC bills, these are bills that normally people have voted along party lines and you've never seen uh, the light of day. Those kind of bills don't, don't, don't pass through because everybody takes his position along what, what favors he or her along party lines. You, we've been able to see that. As I said, we've been able to see bills that will help us improve these or business. You've looked at the bill we passed or made in Nigeria to stimulate the economy, assuming local production, create job creation for, for our people. Some of these uh, uh, bills are things that they, they, they might not be instant, but they're laying the platform in, in, in getting our economy uh, turned around and getting um, jobs for, for our semi use. Dr. Saraki, how does this reflect on, uh, let's say for instance, the uh, Financial Intelligence uh, Unit Bill, which some would say was record 
you know, it, it, it was a speedy process. How did that come about? Well, I think a lot of us were concerned here in that we've been, we've been suspended from the Egmont, the Egmont group, and the ramifications of that and the implications of that is not good for the fight against corruption. And anything we can do to support the fight against corruption and, and, and as such, and we knew that we were going on a recess that would probably will be away for a while, and, 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 and it's better that we send the message out to the international community that, yes, we, we believe in the issue of the autonomy of, of, of the Financial Intelligence Unit, and Parliament is supporting that. And, and I think by passing that bill, that message has gone straight, and already we're getting feedback from a lot of uh, uh, the, the community, forensic accountants have come to praise us that we've sent the message out to the international community that we're strong on the fight of, of, against corruption. We, we will do all that is necessary to strengthen that. And, and that is the, the kind of message coming out of that, so that that suspension can be lifted and we can be back into, the, into, the, into that community of where data and information are exchanged, which has done, gone a long way in helping us in the fight against, against, against corruption. So that's also an important bill. So again, we respond you know, to things that, you know, that require urgency and things that, um, for example, even if you look at the request of Mr. President, some of the, uh, the loans, that, um, the, the, those that the game we felt that we needed to address before we went on recess. So there are, there are things that we believe are, are understand important that uh, we, we work very hard to, to, to pass them through. And we, 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 we'll return to that, but now yeah. that you raise the subject of some of the loans uh, requests from the federal government, uh, there's a particular one which uh, uh, catches attention. The Senate approved some of these loans. Key among them is the Rail for the Railway project, and uh, this is co-funded with the China Exim Bank. Tell us about that. Well, you know, there's a request from, from, from government to to fund the, the railway project, which the Chinese Exim Bank is providing a loan for, and the government is providing their counterpart. Uh, initially, um, there's the Lagos Ibadan um, segment of it, then there's also Ibadan Kanu segment of it, then there's the Calab Calabar Axis, and of course, there's also the Northeast Axis. Um, so the request uh, we had received was for all four, really, and, and, and you can imagine the kind of amount I came up to, and so that so that there was a challenge there in, in, in being able to see you know, whether to approve or all. But some of them were not supported by I think, or oh, apart from one, was supported by uh, approval from the board of uh, China Exim, which was the Lagos Ibadan. So we said, look, since we're going on reset, let's just approve the Lagos Ibadan that has a board approval from Chinese Exim Bank. Get that send the right message again across. The China Exim Bank that were in support of it, and the others, once we get the board approval of China Exim Bank, we would we will support it. It is a good project. Um, I think it will go a long way to help commercial activity, reduce cost of doing business, uh, open um, development in different parts of those areas. It is good. But as we do that as well, we must, as government, also be you know just keep an eye on our level of borrowing. And it, uh, that's also is is important. So this is the question that many Nigerians would want to raise, uh, Senate President, that um, the story of the railway development project is, 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 is a long and winding one and so many times there have been commitments. So can Nigerians trust this Senate that it would go ahead with performing the due diligence oversight on how these projects are taken on? We'll do that. We will we, we, we'll do that and within, within the powers that we can. Um, and that is why we, we, we would also be very um, prudent in looking at the costing and being sure that you know, that uh, the project uh, is properly costed and that um, it's been done properly. We've done this legacy burden at least. Yeah, let's do that. Let's see. They're promising to deliver, I think, by, um, if I'm right, at the end of 2018 or early 2019. Um, we'll look at the submissions for the other segments and see whether they're, they're, they're also um, well, well, well costed, well designed, and um, um, we will definitely ensure that we oversee properly. Um, it's important, but but by and large, it is it is a viable project. It is a project that the country needs. What we must do is to ensure that the, the cost of it is is, is 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 value for money, and the money is well efficiently spent. As we begin to wind down, there are three things we'd like to put across to the Senate President. First, 
has been the presiding officer of the Senate, the Eighth Senate. It's two years gone, and uh, just uh, gone across the halfway mark. Yeah. So it's uh, thought that before you know it, this period would this uh, period would be over. So what would Nigerians want to look at this Senate? At the end of it, what should Nigerians look at this Senate and refer to it as having done? I believe that one of, one of our main focus, as one of the focus we've talked about, is, is one is the area of um, the economy. Um, I think I would like the, we would like to see at the end of the Senate that we'll have passed legislation that definitely will make our economy stronger. We'll pass legislation that will stimulate investment in Nigeria. We'll pass legislation that will ensure jobs are created. And there are three already that are, are key to that. We've already done. The, I mean. The made in Nigeria that we put in the public procurement bill is huge. I believe that if we can truly harness that, where government's procurement is, Nigerians are given first option to be able to, to, to patronize Nigerian goods, we go a long way to create jobs where a lot of people don't have jobs and stimulate the industry. And that, that originated from the National Assembly. That is key. I think that's one of the legacies that we, we want to say. Secondly, also at the back of that, is some of the bills we pass on infrastructure. Government, you see, my position and the position of the Senate is that government cannot fund all level of infrastructure. And even if government attempts to fund all the level of infrastructure, social sector will suffer, health will suffer, education will suffer. What we need to do is get government to shift its resources to social and education and let private sector come in. But private sector will not come in if they're not the right laws that they see uh, will protect their interests and will ensure that they invest. Now, before now, all the laws we had, infrastructure, railway law, was 50 years ago. Ports laws, many years ago. Road transport, road authority, road fund, inland revenue. These are uh, laws that we have are taken up to see that we bring them in line with modern economy. We are reviewing Kama law to ensure, again, that we make the process by which registration of companies for medium and, medium, medium and small scale companies, event, ISA laws, investment and security. These are laws that would make it easy for SMEs to be able to do business. Now, some of those might not yield results which you see today, tomorrow. Now, it's not like you turn off the switch, the light on and off. But these are the foundation that years go on, go on. people will remember that those laws were passed by the state Senate. Those are the kind of things that, so that's on the economy side. On the transparency side, that, okay, in the Senate, we have open accounts of tenure. Okay, it took so long, but hey, it's, it's been done now. And we'll lay the foundation for a more transparent National Assembly. This National Assembly has been the most that are engaged with the public in, their, in their public hearings, what happens in the plenary, what is, what is feeding live on, on the activities that is going on. That is also part of the process to open it to, to Nigerians to be able to contribute, to be able to criticize, some, say, tell us what their views are. And then create, as I said, one of the things you also find out that we've treated more petitions in the National Assembly. We've created an avenue for Nigerians to come and say, listen, I've been wrongly treated here. I've been badly treated. So it's, there's begin to some accountability. People, and then also the fight against corruption. There's no agency in Nigeria that can sit on this, in, in, comfortable in this chair and believe that if a petition comes to the National Assembly or to the Senate, on that eight Senate, that petition will be swept on the carpet. Nobody, we take them up, we address that. If you look at the bills sent to us by, by Mr. President on anti-corruption, we have passed, the, passed them. We've passed the whistleblower, we passed the witness protection, uh, mutual assist, uh, legal assistance. So these are major legislation that has gone a long way to, to strengthen our economy, strengthen the, uh, 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 the, uh, the country as a whole, make it more, uh, more vibrant. And also, as I said, the fundamentals of all this to strengthen the democracy itself. We must strengthen And how do we do that? We start from the process by which how people are elected, and, and we do that. So, and then, of course, on top of that is the constitutional amendment also that we've done. When you look at all these uh, different legislation, you begin to say that definitely we, we, will have, we will have made an impact not only for today, will have made an impact in defining the Nigeria of tomorrow. Well, that's as far as the Senate is concerned. Now, what about Dr. Bukola Saraki as president of the Senate? I'm just, uh, is, as you know, the president of the Senate uh, is, uh, is uh, 
one yeah. among the equal and, and as such. Well, so you are the presiding uh, officer. So I preside. Can you, I mean, to show you, I didn't even get the opportunity to vote in constitutional amendment. I showed you how with the little power I have. I can't, I, but um, look, for me, uh, I've always had uh, uh, what motivates me. I always like to leave a place better than I met it. I always like to leave a place stronger than and leave the institution stronger. If, if at the end of my term I have, I've, I've made the National Assembly uh, play its role in a democracy, the difference between democracy and dictatorship is parliament. And, and that's why I tell people that um, even if you don't like Bukola Saraki, let us separate me from the institution. We must strengthen this institution. Um, four years, I'm gone. Somebody else will be there. But those institutions are important to strengthen our democracy. If you have a weak parliament, you have a weak democracy. And, but a lot of people, because of their myopic or, or their, their self-interest, do not see the importance why we must protect those institutions. We must protect the legislature, we must protect the judiciary. When we decided to have the presidential system, it was based on the fact that there must be checks and balances. So when there are checks and balances, it strengthens the democracy. You don't want dictatorship. So when we stand for some of these issues, we're standing not for today, not for tomorrow. But it takes somebody with a strong mind, strong character, and a commitment. Because sometimes when you see the level of also of blackmail, or because people are trying to push their agenda, in their sense, you weaken the institution. Strengthening the institution, not standing for Bukola Saraki, because that institution will stay there many years after me and you are gone. But we must strengthen the institutions. If we weaken the institutions, what's a, a democracy cannot be strong. And I must always remember, even when you look at the executive, today you could have a honest, hardworking, transparent president. Tomorrow, you could have a dishonest, corrupt, not so good president. The only thing that will keep a democracy strong is the institution. So we should, we should always remember that as, as we move ahead that it's important. And the pride of every country is, is, is strength, is how your democracy, how solid it is, and the foundation that it is laid on. We must strengthen institutions, not individuals. And that is really one of the focus. And it will take time because over the years, um, as you say, Parliament is the newest, uh, people have always been used, even the military, you always had executive, you always have judiciary. But what is new is, is legislative. So it's, it's not surprising that people say, oh, what are they doing there? Oh, what value do they have? Oh, they don't have anything. So those things are, are, are things that over years, as we continue to play a role, the people begin to understand the importance of it. Exactly. That's where we, we, we we're going to go. And you worry about the public perception of the legislature. I mean, you hear things like, uh, oh, this is the worst. You see all kinds of comments and... Uh, glad that you've just said it yourself that what are they doing there? Someone had even gone to the extent of suggesting mm -hmm. that the... That this is the worst... Uh, yeah, yeah, I heard that as well. That. So I, how do you respond to that? Uh, honestly, I, I think either the person must be uh, ignorant, incompetent, um, and um, really not, 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 uh, uh, not uh, someone that is interested in moving this country forward. Because I, I would like to wonder what parameter you say. Uh, we've listed... Uh, if you go by the response to the National Assembly, our main issue is the issue of passing uh, legislation, oversight, and making a difference. And these are major, major uh, uh, legislation that we have passed that have never been done before. And then somebody gets up and says that it is, it is the worst. And there's an example of what I talk about. Um, people are just self. You know, whether you like the person who is there, that's not the issue. The issue is that we must build those institutions to ensure that that democracy is, is, is stronger. Do you think there's still a large percentage of um, misunderstanding oh, yeah, of the, yeah. oh, yeah, the so. legislation? I think so. And it's, and it's not going to happen over, it's not going to change overnight. It's going to take time because of the past. I mean, people are uh, they're, they're carrying a lot of you know, perceptions. And I think it, it will take time when people begin to understand um, the, 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 the role of, of, of uh, of, of the legislative arm of government. So it's not something that I think would, would happen overnight, but what I think in doing that, we must um, make sure that you know, we are honest and frank in, in, in our commentaries. Uh, there's a lot of people that, that make those comments, not because they believe in what they're saying, but they, they think that those are the things that, uh, uh, those are what is their own agendas. But, uh, but I think with time, people will begin to see that, um, that, uh, that um, this, is, this is an institution that is in, in the interest of the entire country.
There's a part in short which would like you to comment on, and it has to do with this uh, process of amending the Constitution. The APC uh, prides itself that it is uh, gender friendly. I'm wondering just how many of the women folk would have been uh, pleased with uh, how the issue of 35% affirmative action played out. Well, I, I, first of all, let me, I, I, you, you keep on referring me to the APC, uh, because as, as I said, it's, it's, it's different if the Constitution, if the National Assembly, the APC are two thirds. Yes. So I, no, I, I think we just need to, because you keep on bringing that yeah, in. Because, I think because you, I need you, to, it's your party. It's my party. It's uh, but what you, your we party do. has set out yeah. to do, and it is expected that uh, however it does it, the party would find a way to galvanize support we are for its We have found a way. But through constitutional amendment, we needed two-thirds. We could not get two-thirds, OK? Mm. But what we've achieved, which I think, I mean, you know, fortunately, it, it was dwarfed in all the noise, and it was not, is the fact that a lot of people had concern that uh, affirmative action as such should not come in the constitution. So what we, what we negotiated in the Senate, at least, was that, okay, there's a gender bill already coming up, which is due, which already passed second reading. Now let us have a commitment that this affirmative action that we're talking about will come in the gender bill. And we got that on the floor. So I'm confident that when we come back on the, on, from the recess, we'll be able to bring the gender bill and pass it. And if we can bring the gender bill and pass it and achieve that, uh, that is fantastic. Even all the countries, everywhere in the world that we are, we are talking about gender, don't have um, affirmative gender thing in the constitution. It is, it is by, uh, by law. If we can achieve that, I think as APC as a party, we'll have, we'll have delivered on that, on that mandate. And I think as a country, we'll really truly be uh, among the, 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 the few countries that have that um, um, affirmative action by law. So the female folk can rest assured that I can, uh, I can assure this has them. just not been thrown out of the window. No, don't them. worry, because you know, as I tell them, you know, I have I have three daughters, and, and so I'm not <laughs> actually, I'm not resting. And, but I look, it's something that we will do, um, and I think that as I always say, we must continue to engage because we have to understand this is a country, multi ethnicity, more diversity, multi religious. So we've got to be sensitive and not assume that if if you don't see the way I'm thinking, then you're you 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 that you're stupid or you don't know what you're talking about. That cannot be the attitude. Nigeria is is based on what it is. We cannot run away from that. So what we should do is understand where we're coming from and and use that to guide how we get our solutions. That's what we should try and do. Yes, for, for a lot of people to understand, yes, we must do something about this. But at the same time, there are people too that have, have concerns and apprehension. Call them whatever you want to call them. But they're still part of this country. You can't send them away. I can't send them away. They can't send me away. They can't. So we're all going to live in our one country. And the only way to do that, this is where the political sagacity comes from, where we must be able to sit down and say, OK, despite it. And that, that's what we're able to mark, work out in the sense, OK, you know what? Right. OK, we will not put it in the Constitution. But do you concede in principle that this is what we want? We're able to extract that. Yes, OK, fine. Let's put it in the law then. If we get that, to me, we have done a great achievement as a country. Because when you list a lot of many countries, there are not many countries that have even been able to achieve that. So where, what we're even targeting in the Constitution will have taken us I mean, many countries that we look up to doing will have in the Constitution. So if we can achieve this, but what I'm appealing is why we're trying to achieve this, let's, we need everybody. Let's not begin to address those that didn't support it, because we still need them. This is, this is why I said that the process in Parliament, people need to understand it. We need people. We need to engage. For as long as they're still sitting on that seat at the end of their tenure, we need them. We need their support. So what we should try and do is how we can convince them that this bill is the interest of all of us. And that is the work I'm doing. And I'm hopeful that you know, by the time we come back, we should be able to celebrate that. Senate President Dr. Bukola Sareki, it's been interesting talking to you. Thank you so we much. We have to ask Good. you to come again some other time <laughs> and uh, find out so many other issues. All right, thank you so much. Right. And that is our program. Thank you for watching. I'm Cyril Stover. Bye for now.